Hi everyone, I am Marissa Ledbetter. I am the Sherwood Kids Production Coordinator and I am so honored to be with you this hour of devotions. We are looking at the trial of Jesus and we are diving right into Matthew chapter 27 verses 11 through 26 and I'm going to be reading from the NIV and we're going to begin. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two of you want to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, and he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Let's just pray. Dear Lord Jesus, as we meditate on your word, Lord, just speak to us, speak to our hearts, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we could see a bunch of different things happening here. Now, first of all, we have the crowd, we have the religious leaders, we have Pilate himself. And Pilate was not a noble person. He had come from Spain, he served in the wars on the Rhine up in Germany. And when prisoners come before him, usually, they're begging and pleading for their lives. They're trying to um, make a case for themselves. And then there's the Jewish leaders, the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin, and they have their own agenda. They want something. Pilate knows all of this. He, he understands. He doesn't have much respect for them. He knows that they are after something. But then there's Jesus. And Jesus is just simply still and very stoic and calm and at peace. And even though the charges were brought, and by the way, these charges were totally bogus, as we know, the religious leaders had to come up with something to bring before Pilate. They came up with something that they knew would would have to be large enough to go before the Roman governor to get the Romans involved, right? So they had to um, come up with three things. So they, they blamed Jesus for, number one, encouraging the people to not pay their taxes to Rome. Um, number two, um, they claimed that he was a king, so they didn't have to listen to Caesar. Um, they also said that he was causing riots all over the countryside. So basically, they were saying that Jesus was um, evading taxes, um, causing treason, and basically terrorism, 
terrorizing all over. And so these were the reasons they brought him to Pilate or to the Romans to deal with. But these accusations were false and they were determined to have Jesus killed. Now Caiaphas, one of the leaders, he was just so annoyed and angry every time Jesus wouldn't answer. But Pilate was amazed. He was amazed that Jesus didn't answer. He was amazed that, that Jesus had nothing to offer to stand up for himself. Pilate had no agenda here. He, he just probably heard of Jesus, heard of all these things happening. He probably heard of Jesus coming into Jerusalem days before about all the people gathering, shouting Hosanna. It was amazing to him seeing Jesus in person, face to face, asking him questions. And here was Jesus just not standing up for himself, not pleading with him, not begging with him for his life to be released, even coming against his accusers, not saying anything. Pilate even tried to intimidate Jesus at one point. There's another chapter in the Bible that talks about how Pilate says to Jesus, don't you know I have the power to crucify you or to save you? But Pilate had it backwards. Pilate didn't have that power. Jesus had the power. Jesus had the power to save him, and he didn't even know it. There was Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, sacrificing himself for us. He knew that he was in the will of God at that moment. He did all of that agony and prayer in Gethsemane. He came to terms with what he had to do. And he was so still and calm in the face of all that anger, in the face of that angry mob, in the face of those people coming against him. And he was able to be at peace because he knew he was in the will of God. He knew that what he was doing was right and he didn't have to fight for himself because he knew he was under a higher purpose. He was under a higher power. He was of a higher kingdom. He was in the kingdom of God, listening to his king, telling him what to do, not the kingdom of this world. This was also prophesied long ago in Isaiah 53, 7, that he would be like a lamb led to the slaughter, still and silent. It would have been futile to answer to any of that. The ultimate example of self-assurance and peace. And no one could intimidate Jesus. No one could pressure him. No one can make him answer incorrectly or or fool him into saying something wrong. He didn't allow his emotions to get riled up in the face of that anger. I mean, how many times do we go through situations where we allow our emotions to get the better of us and we say something that we shouldn't or we do something that we shouldn't or we spout off to try to just get our own way. I mean, that's what the religious leaders were doing. They were trying to get their own way. So they were making up these lies just to get their own way. And then there was Pilate who was just faced with crowds that that were just angry and they wanted Jesus crucified. And even though he knew he was innocent, he knew this man did nothing wrong. And instead of letting him go, releasing him, he chose to not let the crowd think badly of him. He wanted to still be popular. He still wanted to have people like him. He still wanted the crowd to not think badly of him. So instead he said, I'm not dealing with this. Uh, you guys, you guys deal with it yourself. I'm washing my hands and walking away. So instead of doing the right thing, even his wife, who was so immoral, who was not a good person, she even had dreams and said, this man is, is righteous, have nothing to do with this man. Even she said that to her own husband. And yet still, it didn't matter. So Jesus' silence testifies to his willingness to suffer as a ransom to many. And he's such a great example of just being still and peaceful and knowing when you are in the will of God, when you are doing what you're supposed to be doing, then everything is going to work out. That trust, that faith, 
will bring you through. And what an amazing example. What an amazing God. What a wondrous, beautiful, just absolutely loving, loving God that we serve. Let's just pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus to be our example, to be our sacrifice, for taking the place for us on that cross, for taking our sins, for standing there, being accused of things that you didn't do, that we've done. Lord, thank you for not letting the story end with the cross, not letting the story end with the mob, not letting the story end with that anger, but instead end in victory and salvation. Lord, we just thank you. We know that we are not of this world. We are not of this kingdom. We are of your kingdom and of your family. And Lord, we just thank you and we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise for who you are and we love you so so much we thank you we bless you in jesus name amen thank you